What is HIV? Human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, is a retrovirus currently infecting 42 million people across the world. HIV causes acquired immune deficiency syndrome, AIDS, a deadly disease with a fatality rate close to 100%. Since its spread, scientists have always wondered where the virus came from and when and how it arose in humans. Although no one is certain of the origin of HIV, scientists did find its closest simian relatives, the simian immunodeficiency viruses, SIVs, and chimpanzees in Sudi Mangabe. It is most likely that HIV jumped to humans from primates through primate bushmeat and pests traded in African markets. Hunters were bitten and exposed to SIV-infected primate blood during the capturing and butchering of monkeys. By testing blood samples taken from hundreds of monkeys sold as bushmeat and pets in Cameroon, a group of scientists showed that 16.6% of all tested animals were infected with SIV. Today, 30 primate species are known to carry SIV. Thanks a lot, Tims! Since its origin in Africa, HIV has spread to most of the world. HIV started in West Africa and has dissipated to the major cities in the United States. In the United States, AIDS was first recognized in 1981 in young homosexual men who succumbed to rare lung infections. Many people use HIV and AIDS synonymously. So what is the difference between HIV and AIDS? Think of it as cause and effect. HIV is the cause and AIDS is the effect. There are three stages of HIV infection. AIDS represents the last stage of HIV infection when the immune system is severely weakened and the body becomes particularly susceptible to opportunistic infections. There are three stages of HIV infection. Each stage has different symptoms. Stage one is known as acute infection. During this time, large amounts of the virus are being produced in the body. Many people develop flu-like symptoms such as fever, sore throat, fatigue, headache, and muscle and joint pains. Stage two is known as the clinical latency stage. The virus reproduces at low levels, so it is still active. Generally, no symptoms appear. With proper treatment, people may stay in stage two for decades. Without treatment, people progress to stage 3. Stage 3 is when the infection becomes a disease, or acquired immune deficiency syndrome, AIDS. Symptoms of stage 3 include rapid weight loss, recurring fever or profuse night sweats, extreme or unexplained tiredness, diarrhea, or pneumonia, to name a few. How does HIV replicate itself? HIV is like a hacker. It hacks into someone's email account and takes control of it. First, the hacker would need the correct password in order to gain access to someone's account. HIV attaches to the surface of T-cells. If it has a correct password, the virus can fuse and enter the T-cell. The virus would then release its genetic material into the cell. The genetic material of the retrovirus and the host is different. HIV's genetic material is in the form of RNA, while the host is DNA. You can think of it like the virus and the host speaking different languages. An enzyme called reverse transcriptase, kind of like a translator, changes the genetic material of the virus so that it can be integrated into the host DNA. The virus's new genetic material enters the nucleus of the host cell and uses an enzyme called integrase to integrate itself into your own genetic material where it may hide and stay inactive for several years. When the host cell becomes activated, the virus uses the host enzymes to create more of its genetic material. A special enzyme called protease cuts the longer HIV proteins into individual proteins. When these come together with the virus's genetic material, a new virus has been assembled. Lastly, the virus pushes itself out of the host cell, killing the host and taking with it part of the membrane of the cell. There are many different drugs designed to target different stages of the replication cycle. Entry inhibitors. These inhibitors interfere with the virus's ability to bind to receptors on the outer surface of the cell it tries to enter. It can be thought of as an individual using an anti-hacking software to prevent hackers from hacking into his account. 
Fusion inhibitors interfere with the virus's ability to fuse with the cellular membrane, preventing HIV from entering a cell. Integrase inhibitors block the HIV enzyme integrase, which the virus used to integrate its genetic material into the DNA of the cell it has infected. The two most commonly used drugs are protease and reverse transcriptase inhibitors. There are two main types of reverse transcriptase inhibitors. The first one, the nucleoside or nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors are faulty DNA building blocks. When one of these faulty building blocks is added to a growing HIV DNA chain, no further correct DNA building blocks can be added on healthy HIV DNA synthesis. The second type, non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, bind to reverse transcriptase, interfering with its ability to convert HIV RNA into HIV DNA. Protease inhibitors interfere with the HIV enzyme called protease, which normally cuts long chains of HIV proteins into smaller individual proteins. When protease does not function properly, new virus particles cannot be assembled. Currently, doctors are using a combination of different drugs, antiretroviral therapy, because using multiple drugs have synergistic effects. HIV is currently incurable. Why is a HIV infection so difficult to treat? That is because the virus is rapidly evolving within a host. HIV has a high mutation rate. It frequently makes mistakes during reverse transcription from RNA to DNA and transcription from DNA to RNA. Sometimes these mistakes can actually end up helping the virus by chance if the mutations protect the virus from the drug. So while viruses without those mutations are killed off, the mutated virus can survive and produce more clones of itself. Over time, the advantageous mutation becomes fixed or increases to 100% frequency in the population and the drug is no longer effective. This is known as immune selection because viruses with the genetic variant can evade the attacks of the immune system. In other words, genetic variation exists within the HIV retrovirus population and the variation is heritable. There is a struggle for existence. Not all retroviruses survive and reproduce. The retroviruses with drug resistance have higher fitness. Natural selection selects for individuals with favorable variations, i.e. drug resistance. They survive and reproduce while viruses that are not drug resistant die off. Eventually, almost all viruses become drug resistant, which is evolution. This is the case in South Africa. Researchers went to two clinics in South Africa and studied patients whose viral load did not reduce with the anti-HIV treatment. The researchers found that at least one drug resistance mutation was detected in virus from 83.5% of the patients. A common misconception is that evolution is a chance event. Evolution of HIV is not a chance event. It is driven by drug selective pressures. Also, people commonly perceive that organisms are getting better through evolution. The HIV virus isn't getting better. It is becoming more adapted to its environment. Resistant HIV is not better than non-resistant strains. They have just evolved to be better suited for their current environment. <coughs>